I was quite young, so. Um, this is ridiculous, what I just had a sip of. Oh, you like so, it? Yeah, so we're going to yes. set the scene. We're, we're at Chapati. We're drinking Ooh. a mango lassi. Yeah. Am I saying that correctly? And we've got Brittany Smith, uh, Nikki Kingston from Yelp. And Yelp Indie. Yeah, we're, we're going to find out what Yelp is all about. So yeah. say hello, y'all. Hey, guys. Hi. So excited to be here. You, you might have to introduce yourself real quick yeah. just so people can sure. kind of follow along with the voices. I am Brittany Smith. I am the Yelp Midwest Regional Director for Yelp. And um, yeah, I'm excited to be here. And I can't talk about Super Bowls, but I can talk about Mango Lassies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nikki Kingston. I'm the Yelp Indie Community Manager, so I love all things local. We're super hands-on with cool local businesses, and my New Year's resolution was to try to be on a podcast, and it's the beginning of February, so time to look for a new one, I guess. It's so exciting. <laughs> no, now Two you can podcasts. retire. Yeah, now I can retire. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Now you have to get on The Lady Gang. Exactly. Nikki and I connect because we both have a favorite podcast called The Lady Gang. <laughs> and we always like message each other back and forth about it. And if we get lady boxes or whatever. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, new goal. They have like a TV show, right? They sure do. Have Goals. you watched it? No. <laughs> but it's on E! Or yeah, Bravo. One it of is the on two. E! My, my wife always watches those shows. I don't watch any of them. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> don't quiz me because I'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, so we're at Chapati. We're, we're on Lafayette Road and yes. essentially 38th, right? Yep. Or like right by 50, 65. Uh, yeah, a little further north. Yeah, 52nd. Yes. 52nd mm -hmm. ish and, and Lafayette Road, mm -hmm. which is right next to one of my favorite liquor stores. <laughs> Fun uh, fact. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to shout this out, no. so I'm not going to, but if you come here, one of my favorite liquor stores is like literally right there. Why is it better than the rest? Uh, because people don't know about it. Mm. Okay. And you can go get so. I used to hunt bourbon with Jared, oh, yeah. so we'd just go look for like rare, expensive bourbon right, to go buy because we need to collect things. And this place <laughs> uh, is kind of off the beaten path, uh, so people don't really think to go yeah. there to, to go look for higher end bottles. Were you at Bourbon Fest this year? I was not. Oh, was I, was, yeah. I was either out of town or, or doing something else. Okay. but. Um, a couple of the guys, so we're both part of a whiskey group. Yeah. And we meet, we try to meet monthly. And uh, a couple of the guys were there trying to win some raffles because they have some nicer bottles. Yeah, it gets serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a friend really one. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should make a mango lassie group now. Maybe starting with the four of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is wonderful. I would drink this that all day. Level. So wh why did Brittany? Why did you choose to come here? Oh, I think I think Nikki actually had proposed it and. We just love this area, the international marketplace, all the businesses over here. Um, Chapati is, has just always killed it in Yelp reviews. And also just the food, it's fun to mix it up. We like to um, get people maybe in areas that they haven't been in the city. So I think that's why Chapati fit the bill. What would you say, Nikki? Yeah, we also do international business um, segments with WFYI. And Chapati was the first one we did here. And it was really exciting. We got to go in the kitchen and see how that it's made and meet their family. And so it's just really special. And so you guys did that through Yelp? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So we'll, we'll kind of dive into to that here in a minute. But I if we can, and we'll, I just want to get a background on, on both of you. And Brittany, we can start with you. Um, kind of just go back where, where, yeah. where you started that eventually led you to, yeah. to working for Yelp. Um, and you can go so as I'm far back as you want. Yeah, I like to share that I am a proud first-generation college student. Mm. I grew up on a farm, uh, Union City, Indiana, about two hours from here. Um, so I, I moved to Indianapolis for Butler, and uh, then I stayed. I fell in love with the city. I was uh, very aggressive about getting internships through college. One, you know, Indianapolis um, monthly magazine, Indiana Humanities, and all through that, my love of Indy just kept growing and growing. And um, eventually, Indianapolis Downtown Incorporated is where I interned. So then I stayed and I worked for them. And then I joined uh, Yelp the year after that. So I was 23 when I joined Yelp. Yeah. Wow. That's and a lot of experience. Here we are. <laughs> That was a very quick bias. So oh, do you want me to go? I can go deeper and deeper. <laughs> yeah. I showed goats in 4-H. Fun fact for 10 years. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what yeah. kind of goat? Pygmy goats. Grand champion. <laughs> Wait. Wait, you are the second grand champion that we've had on the show. From 4-H. Rival. Yes. Um, so, no joke. I Oh gosh, why am I blanking on his name? Derek Neighbor yeah, from, um, um, from Holiday Properties. Yeah, Holiday Properties. He was oh. a uh, 
it was it was, it was the was horse it or model bu- no ma- model building oh. he was a 4-h model building grand champion oh yeah in the categories i yes i loved uh growing up with 4-h and actually i joked my husband i'm like um i don't know how this is going to work because we live in the old north side but i'd really like some goats in our backyard <laughs> so someday something might have to change because i just really loved growing up on a farm but i have an equal appreci- appreciation for living downtown because i mean that's where i've been the last uh, 10 years. Yeah. She also did semester at sea, which I think oh, is yeah, fascinating. <laughs> Nikki can fill in all the gaps. <laughs> yeah, that you're the only one I know I who's to, done that. Yeah. So. I, um, a first person from my family to go overseas too. So through that semester at sea, it was literally a, a sign on my college, just like a tear away, you know, mm-hmm. with those little postcards and sent in and I was able to do that. So we went to Egypt and Morocco and some really cool places and from there it was all just one after the next and I'm proud I'm, I'm I'm on to my 40th country this year. Are you so, kidding? Yeah, oh. so that's I'm excited about. So that. is that where your love of like this area comes from, oh, and, and yeah. for the food? Yeah, I haven't been to India, so yeah. or the Middle East. Um, eventually, I'll get there. But yeah, I I'm always like plotting out next trips and making spreadsheets and looking at flights. Like that's like a hobby. Like some people will hang out on social media. I'll be on um, just like last minute flight sky scanner, all these different websites and. Ooh, we're going to have to get some tips from you at oh, the end, yeah, some, yeah, some takeaways for, for people <laughs> that want to travel. Thanks, Nikki, for helping me fill <laughs> yeah. in. It's so interesting. She knows me well. <laughs> uh, and, like, what? where did your bug for traveling come from? Like you said, yeah. your parents didn't go. Like, you're yeah. the, the first person to travel overseas. Um, I was always curious just to read about different cultures. I love looking at maps. Um, that's something, like, when I was young, I just loved, like, memorizing maps. I would buy, this year at Christmas time, I bought this really, like, I think it's, like, for middle school where you wipe off the whole map of the world and try to fill in all the countries. Like, it's literally yeah. a kid's, like, <laughs> map. But I'm like, yeah, I'm going to try to get as many as I can. She and just got back from Cuba last yeah. week. So what? <laughs> very recent. Yeah. <laughs> Quick little fresh. trip. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my husband actually grew up overseas, too. So that's kind of one way that we united and um, when things started out. But I would say just the curiosity of other cultures. And I grew up in a town where it was not very diverse um, <laughs> at all. And... So it's, it's kind of been fun to share that information with my family. And then as a result, my family has come overseas with me and um, planning a trip to Scotland with my mom this year. So, yeah, just different stuff like that on a budget. Yes. <laughs> what was that like the first time you brought them overseas? Because I'm about oh, to do yeah. that with my family. And I'm like, oh, Ooh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little nervous. How do I prepare you or do I not? Yeah. And just let you <laughs> experience. In. Yeah. So um, that was when I was in Switzerland. I got my sister to go over and study abroad with me my senior year so as soon as I got back from semester at sea I was like gonna do more of this little did I know I don't know how I missed this in the research Switzerland is like literally one of the most co- expensive countries yeah. in the world which is a <laughs> duh at this point in my life but when you're you know 20 and you're deciding where to go I remember getting there and we like looked at a menu at McDonald's just out of curiosity and we're like oh shit we can't even afford McDonald's right now <laughs> and then my parents got over there so we kind of like lied about the currency exchange a little bit that's how my dad like we can keep him like stress-free because if he would have known just the expenses of stuff luckily he just went along with it but hopefully wherever you're going right now the exchange is great if you're going to Europe like the currency yep. rate so use that to your advantage um yeah, and just kind of planning things out and take train wherever you can. I think yeah. that took a lot of stress out of everything. I remember you told me that when I was trying to plan my trip. You sent me all yeah. these links to buy oh, yes, different rail like, passes yes. and that. I didn't buy one, <laughs> but maybe next time. <laughs> I know that it's this. there. It's good also if you're traveling alone as a female. Trains are a good, safe way to get around, too. Yeah? So, yeah. You'll, yeah. Maybe next time you can take the train. Yeah. You Wait, read a book. Your, where yeah. was your husband from? Uh, so he was born in Texas, and then he grew up in Nigeria, Colombia, and Indonesia, which is actually where we're going this wow. year. Yeah. So oh, his cool. life is very colorful, and I've learned so much through him. Yeah. Does he know a lot about coffee? He is. That's funny you say that. He has recently become super obsessed with it. Tinker Coffee and the guys at Coat Check have been hearing all about this. And <laughs> he actually, me, meal, meal from Provider, I bought David like this fake like latte art lesson for his birthday. And they went and like made latte art for hours. And David's an engineer by trade, but every morning he makes a little latte art at his office and sends me a picture. I'm like, wow, <laughs> like, that's his next job. Um, and he's actually building a 
espresso machine from at home, like the woodwork and the, yeah. So he's geeking out hard on coffee right now. (laughs) (laughs) That's very cool. Like by hand an espresso machine. You should sell those. It's, it's intense. (laughs) I don't (laughs) don't give them ideas. Yeah. The first (laughs) ad is this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. I get a discount, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, you know, I actually thought of something. Actually, when Nikki was living overseas uh, in Spain here a year or two mm-hmm. ago, my, my sister, I don't think she believed me, but when Nikki's an intern, I was like, I'm going to come over and see you in Spain. And we went over and we went to Hungary she, together. She literally yeah. visited me in Spain. <laughs> wow. Followed yeah. me there. Nikki's worth the trip. <laughs> oh, thanks. Well, since we're talking about Nikki, yeah. <laughs> Nikki, let's get, let's get a little bit of a background on you. Yeah. So I grew up in Indy. I love Indy through and through. Um, I went to Butler and then go dogs. Go dogs. Two. I feel so <laughs> like surrounded. Yes. <laughs> um, I loved it. And uh, while I was in college, I applied to actually internet visit Indy, and I didn't realize Yelp was in Indianapolis. Um, and Morgan at Visit Indy passed my information on to Britt, and I was so thankful because it was the coolest internship ever. I ended up sticking around way longer than I should have originally, <laughs> but it really helped me break out of the bubble because I feel like mm-hmm. you tend to go to the same places while you're at a university, and it, it, it really matured me with Indy, and I just got to go to all these like really cool, hidden, secret spots and go behind the scenes and learn from like a wide variety of people. and met a lot of cool Yelpers through that too. So that was exciting. Um, and I studied abroad in college. I went to Australia. Um, then when I got back, I didn't know what to do when I graduated. That was about when I finished the Yelp internship. There wasn't a position open yet. And I really felt like I needed to learn more about the world before I just settled into a job. And so I applied to teach English in Spain because that's about the only thing you can do if you want to live there. <laughs> so uh, I went and did that. I didn't speak any Spanish. Really wanted to learn. It was really hard right at the beginning trying to like negotiate for an apartment in Spanish. And you're <laughs> like trying to read off your little dictionary and <laughs> while hoping you don't get taken advantage of like price wise. But it was Whoa. awesome. You really walked into that conversation with <laughs> with a dictionary. And yeah. Like, no way. Yeah. It's like, hold on. How do you say counter off? Yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. Like, <laughs> soy pobre yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it's yeah. really intimidating. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's when did your parents do a lot of traveling like or, or anything N- like that? No? no, my my dad he used to travel a lot for work and so now he doesn't he refuses so like <laughs> i really wanted I him to visit me in spain um, my mom came so that was really exciting we went to the arctic circle together and then spain Whoa. um so that was really big for them to like leave the country my sister left the country for the first time to visit me so that was really awesome and then while i was there i got to travel a lot which really that was my first time in europe as well so that opened a lot of doors and i just learned a lot so yeah. So a, a, a <laughs> common thread here is that like yeah. you love traveling, you love indie. Do you think that that intersects somewhere that you just love culture? Oh, sure. So then it's building community. Yeah. I think it's like a, a sense of um, exploration, wanting mm-hmm. to dig deeper and that you can have. I mean, honestly, like Nikki and I will schedule co-working days where it's our own field trip. We'll be like, OK, let's choose <laughs> next Monday. We're going to Greenwood and we'll pick like a couple different businesses. Neither of us have been mm-hmm. to. It's so strategic, honestly. It's like, OK, we're going on this trip. OK where are we going to eat lunch? Where are we going to have our coffee? Like, <laughs> okay, new places every time. And it's like traveling in your own city. So yeah. that keeps it fun in between the actual trips. I think too, once you've traveled and you you come back to your hometown, you realize like how many awesome businesses represent those countries. So it's like mm-hmm. coming back from Spain, looking for the one business that had like a hormone <laughs> slicer yeah. and like <laughs> connecting with them and, you know, just like trying to highlight those businesses because you finally understand like how special they are and where they can come from. And Mm-hmm. You want to tell their story, too. So, yeah. So you came back from Spain. Mm-hmm. And how did you get reconnected with Yelp? <laughs> yeah. So I came back. I had been talking to Britt the whole time. She v- followed me to Spain. <laughs> Can't, I told her she could never get rid of me. After yeah, the internship. it was awesome. Um, she planned an amazing outing. We actually went to Budapest together. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. such a fun trip. Wow. <laughs> you had yelped it. Oh. Yes. <laughs> um, and then when I came back, I was looking for jobs and there is a marketing assistant position open for Yelp so it was gonna be temporary just for a couple months while I looked for a job Um, and then (laughs) right as I was interviewing Britt actually got promoted to be like Midwest regional lead so she's over several different states and 
slid right in that position. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. The marketing, Nikki didn't have plans to come back to Indian. I was like, okay. I was like rallying. I was like, what can we do? I mean, I didn't like leave my job because of that. <laughs> but I'm so glad she's here. I actually yeah. just told her today. I'm like, I'm so glad I get to work with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how sweet. And so talk a little bit about uh, exactly what you guys do for Yelp, right? And, and Yelp, Yelp as a whole, I think people mm-hmm. probably have this preconceived notion yeah. of what Yelp is, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it's very different than what you guys actually do, yeah. um, and, and even to the extent of, of you know, the scope of what you guys do. So um, whoever best can talk about that. Yeah, yeah I can kick it off. So, uh, so I'm the Yelp Indie Community Manager. So my market is from Bloomington to Lafayette and everywhere in between. And I think a lot of people sometimes associate Yelp with like, like, like this big company and I always get calls from advertising and things like that and they don't realize. So we're, we're both on the ground in the city that we grew up in and um, we are completely separate from the advertising departments of Yelp and things like that. So we, our job is to connect the public to local businesses in any way we can. And everything we do for local businesses is free. So we do everything from like the WFY radio segments to we have done multiple TV segments. All the events we do is all to highlight local businesses for our audience. And so we really do that in every single outlet possible. And it just means a lot when we we get to meet the business owners one on one constantly. And so you hear the story, you realize how special they are. A lot don't have marketing dollars and we have this Mm -hmm. big audience. And so we try to highlight all those businesses. I like to think that we're like the pro bono marketing branch of Yelp and that Yelp cares enough about this element to hire people and put them on the ground in these communities, which is pretty cool because you're not going to find that with other websites like yeah. right here on the ground. Um, so my role um, after being the community manager in Indy, then I uh, stepped into the Midwest regional director, which our team has nine different cities. So like tomorrow, I'll be going down to Louisville and throwing a party with Cardinal Spirits. Um, just piloting. I, 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 I so good. can't help it. I kind of love also where we can integrate <laughs> Indiana businesses into the markets on our team. So um, to the north, up to Detroit, Buffalo, New York, Rochester, down the south, Nashville, Tennessee. Whoa. And, um, so it's fun to explore those cities and learn from all of our communities what we're doing and um, there's more overlap than you would imagine just with all these Midwestern businesses. Like Simplicity Juice was Mm -hmm. at an event in Yelp, Cincinnati last week. In Hotel Tango. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's fun to see these Indiana businesses that are growing. So they're like reaching out and they're like, hey, um, Cardinal Spirits was connecting with Yelp Buffalo, New York last week because now they're in New York. So it's fun to see those Indiana stories like just killing it in the Midwest Mm -hmm. and beyond. Yeah. And then all of our communities too, we have multiple events a month. So we have one event a week pretty much in Indy and it'll be anything from like a restaurant is opening and they want people in the door to kind of start the hype over the restaurants. We'll like come in and they'll tell their story, talk about specials, have people try different foods. Um, or we've done crazy events like Britt planned one a couple of years ago is cabrewing down the canal. So we had a couple thousand people getting inner tubes that we blow, blew up <laughs> ourselves. Son of work, about to pass out. I heard about that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but Nikki didn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was her initiation. Yeah, that was it really rough. was like it literally. Really was. Um, but then there was about 20 businesses down the side of the Indy Canal passing out like a slice of pies. So someone's just eating pie down the river and <laughs> yeah. inflatable. There's local beer, local craft cocktails. So we do all kinds of events. They're all free for everyone to attend. They're free for businesses to participate. And they're so fun. Yes. <laughs> so do you guys just have free reign to go out there and come up with these ideas and, yes. and do it? And then That's, it's just yeah. like the logistics is on you. Yeah, I would mm-hmm. say. Uh, so one of your questions you had was what keeps us up at night? You know, just think about that in advance. I'm like uh, event ideas, like crazy, like wild ass ideas. It's like, okay, how can we throw a party in an Indigo bus? How can we throw this, like turn this uh, rooftop into XYZ event? So just getting people to see their community in a new way is so fun for us. And Yelp provides us with the resources, but it's all like, make it your own, make it local. Don't like have some like cookie cutter template. We don't work from. Yeah. So yeah, that's fun. And so what I think is so cool is you guys are doing like the same thing that, that we're doing. You get to interact with these businesses. Mm-hmm. And the, mm-hmm. the, the point that jumped out at me more than anything was like, you get to hear their story yes. and like why it's important for them to be around mm-hmm. and like how it all got started and how much they struggled just to even open the door. Yeah. Like what makes me so sad is just like looking back at some of the guests that we have, have had on 
whose doors have had to close, right? And yeah. if people mm-hmm. only had the opportunity mm-hmm. to find out about it a little bit sooner, right? You buy yeah. into like why that person is doing it or what makes them a little bit different or unique. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that is typically the catalyst to get you to go out and try something, right? So true. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think what you guys do do is awesome. But again, I think that Likewise. there's a, a, a sheen mm-hmm. of like, uh, like this weird perception of it's mm-hmm. just reviews or mm-hmm. something, you know? Yeah. Right. So I guess I get, sorry, there's both of us. We can go, but just thinking about bringing communities online, offline is like one of our big things. So like, mm. how do we take those interactions and actually get you in front of Chapati and hear the story of Chapati? And yes, you love it and you're a customer, but like, how like the world of difference it makes once you actually know like they gave up everything that not for Tripati but like you gave up all these uh took all these chances to start this business and like once you know that story you're like really invested into it yeah definitely and I was gonna say we have a Yelp elite squad too and anyone's allowed to nominate themselves so it's like the Yelp India elite squad you all can be a part of it (laughs) Um, but it's awesome because it's a wide range of people from like age 25 to like 70 and they all show up to these events by themselves just based out of their love to explore Indy and highlight it and so there are also the people in Indy that like are using Yelp consistently and are are also mostly positive because their goal is like to build up the businesses like Mm -hmm. we're there to like hear them and get to know them it's more than just like try this food (laughs) so it's really fun so that's who goes to like a lot of the events and really gets involved so Mm -hmm. i can vouch for those events (laughs) i'm trying to think of my my favorite we did a cycling event once Mm -hmm. um at in in carmel in cycle that's a good you cycle and watch music videos completely different experience (laughs) yeah Yeah. like full music videos yes i watch there was a justin timberlake music video and now every time i hear the song like i immediately yeah i go back to that and how pumped i was to (laughs) ride my bike (laughs) and and so how long have you guys been working for for yelp now almost seven years for me yeah oh my gosh i was an intern for two and i've been in this position for about a year and a half so still fresh still meeting people and and so how has it changed from when you started to to what's going on now (laughs) I think of uh, when I would be at a booth, like let's say at the Microburst Festival, and I, I was, it was very like scrappy, like on the ground. Um, actually, I remember asking Yelp when I was interviewing, like, so how do you make money? This whole, <laughs> this, like, I don't <laughs> yeah. get this. Like, yes, what? Let's talk about I can that. Wor- yeah. I can work remotely. Let and me get my yeah, <laughs> it was such an interesting thing. And so being at a booth, people would come up and be like, have you heard of Yelp? And the answer was like nine times out of 10, it was like, no. And also at that time, the <laughs> smartphone was not to where it is. So we were all mm. on desktop. So it wasn't like you were like downloading an app <laughs> and like using it on the go. People were using it on desktop. So that's transitioned a lot. Um, just our community te- team has grown so much too. And yeah, it's been fun to watch. So did you just say like, remember to Google Yelp when you come home? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, remember us. Um, search it. Yeah. And now it's just so much more handy. And I know you're talking about like collections, just the different ways that you can use Yelp. You can, yeah. Um, it's changed immensely. So um, were you the first community manager for Indy? No. So there was one, um, John Ackerman was here before me for okay. a year. And actually I had worked with him. That was when the Super Bowl was here. So I was uh. working with Yelp part time um, while I worked at Downtown Indy Inc. So I remember doing an underground party at the city market in the catacombs. It was 99 bottles of beer on the wall. Literally, we had taped 99 bottles of beer on the wall and did this really cool underground party for locals during the Super Bowl. Um, and then he took a role with Yelp out in San Francisco. So, and then he ended up in Toronto. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's wild. So um, it's changed a lot. Mm, Wait, yeah. what was that party like? <laughs> that part, describe it. Super, yeah, it was no, like no, no. super take, take scrappy back. back in the days. I remember walking down the steps to the catacombs. <laughs> you know, you had to think like the resources are available. He like took duff, duct tape and had like literally 99 bottles of beer on the wall. And our parties probably used to be a little bit wilder than they are now. <laughs> I remember actually being at a party at 1933 Lounge when it opened and I had maybe too many Manhattans. And I told John like, yeah, I'd like to help you part time because I can, I could really use some travel money because I was working at a nonprofit. I needed some travel money. Yeah. Okay? And then like uh, it happened. And then like three months later, shoot. John moved. And <laughs> so um, those drinks are not light. Oh, they're, they're, they're strong. For real. Those emo colos, that's what, yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you ever been up there? No. It's red. Oh, it is, yeah. It's very red up it, there. Oh, you're talking about the, Wait, the where dresses? Is that, yeah. Yeah, I, I just like, I've only been there drunk <laughs> that I can remember. Yeah, right? so or describe I, it. Or yes. I ended up, Tell us I about ended it. up yeah. there drunk. It's a little blurry. Uh, but the only thing that comes to mind up there is just red. Yes. That's all I can remember. Where is that kind this? of a dark vibe? Above St. Elmo's. 
It's like a little side staircase. I love that you can get two fillet sliders of mac and cheese for fifteen dollars, and then you get the <laughs> then you get the Elmo cola, and you feel super fancy, but you didn't like blow the full wad downstairs. So. Sounds like something I can do. Bougie yeah. on a budget is yeah. what yeah. I'm yeah. there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And were you drinking the Elmo colas? No. Oh, uh, the straight bourbon. No, I was drinking uh, <laughs> old fashions. Okay, there yeah. you go. <laughs> it's um, dangerous up there. You brought up the catacombs. I've always been interested oh, in this. Yes. Talk about those. Have oh. you thrown more parties in there since then? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 What, what are they? Uh, like, what are the catacombs? Yeah. Yeah, so it used to be like an extension of the market. There was even like a butcher down in there. Um, that You can do a really great tour. They do, do them a couple times a month. Um, but when we were down there, they highlight how there used to be businesses vibrantly active down there. And now it's just like a almost like a shelled out brick um, archways. It feels almost like you're overseas um, Mm -hmm. in the vibe. But what we had done was maybe two years ago, we did the longest um, charcuterie board party ever was the concept. So it was like a... How did I not get an invite? Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So there were a hundred people and we incorporated like 15 different businesses to provide all the elements that would create like a amazing charcuterie board and it was kind of gothic vibe party it was in october um and it was literally like a hundred foot spread of all the local cheeses meats honeys um, nuts everything you could think of so it was a fun way to showcase lots of businesses at once and um it it just was the right vibe for that space too yeah we also did one this year as yelp's friendsgiving in the catacombs underground friendsgiving (laughs) Um, but we had hedgerow brought all the food the chef there used to work at city markets that was really cool and special to him and then Mm -hmm. gallery pastry made like macaroon cakes Oh, yeah. They were huge, like massive macaroons. I love macaroons. It was yeah. amazing. It was very cool. And it, there's like water kind of dripping down the walls. Like kind of makes a cool effect. Yeah. I've never cool been sounds. down there. I guess I just don't uh, know what the word catacomb means. Because, uh, you know, like I had a this. Dictionary. Yeah. 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 Where's your dictionary? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can learn it in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. I had this just like macabre thing in my head where it's just like death. And there was like, because the word yeah. tomb is in Seems there, creepy. right? Seems Cat- right. Catacomb. Maybe I'm. Confusing the word comb and tomb. <laughs> They're just spelled it's very similar. Confused. Glad yeah. we talked it out. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I worked this out. I worked this out. We'll, we'll a edit future it out, recording maybe. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. Actually, that would be, be pretty sweet. Cool. Is there electricity happen? Happen? down there? Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I mean, limited, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> makes it part of the fun. Yeah. Right. So what's the coolest place that you've had a party or a gathering or whatever you want to call it, a Yelp thing? Oh, Other than Wanna the catacombs. That's a good question. Oh my gosh. I could One that comes to mind is we rode those Surrey bikes um, that are in White River <laughs> <laughs> State Park. You know, like those oh bikes where you can put your kids in the little front and then there's like two rows of seats like, ping, and an ping. awning over them. <laughs> <laughs> so we partnered with them um, and we rode those bikes all around town. And we stopped at different businesses and everyone decorated them. It's so like we a parade. Like, yeah, it was a parade down the street. We were going really slow. Um, stopped at like Wild Eggs and just fun yeah. businesses along the way that had just opened. But yeah. I just remember that being ridiculous. Like if you picture 15 of those going down the road, like yeah. with streamers hanging down and it was happening. Yelp flags. It was fun. Um, I would probably say old city hall. So it amazes me the city. Uh, so for the bazaar back four years ago, I was looking for a space that was before we moved to central library and mm-hmm. I was just obsessed with old city hall. I just love old vacant buildings. That's mm-hmm. what I talk about a lot. Uh, mm-hmm. and old city hall. I found one contact out my friend, Tiffany Benedict Berkson with historic Indianapolis. I'll never forget. She connected me with the city and the city gave me the key to old city hall. And we, my former intern and I literally had a shovel and a broom. It was completely vacant and I had to <laughs> clean up all three floors of it. It was in wild like disrepair it had just been sitting empty for years um they trusted us that we like went through cleaned it up hosted the event there cleaned it back up after what was that the halloween no that was um the bazaar oh that was bizarre yeah it was the bazaar so we filled in every nook and cranny and wow um it was like a lot of there's a lot of physical labor that people don't think about that goes behind (laughs) events like blowing up a thousand inner tubes on the canal like i can't imagine exhausting before the party even starts yeah (laughs) so small team yeah and then um probably yelps white night on the circle um turning the circle into a, a dinner party with a thousand people and I remember one time, I'm trying to think, I think were you there when it rained? Mm-hmm. It was the day before. We had to change oh, yeah. the venue for a thousand person party oh, with zero dollars budget. <laughs> and uh, Circle City Industrial Complex saved the day. And we like literally sent out the attendee, like party has changed location tomorrow <laughs> night. It's going to be at Circle City Industrial Complex. And it was just so cool to see like the 
warm vibes of the setup. People decorated their own tables, yet in the industrial vibe of Circle City. And nobody had been there yet. Um, so that was a win, too. Is yeah. that Was that where the current farmer's market is? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's an awesome space. It is. Um, I ran through there over the weekend. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Just keeps popping up more and more in there, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Explain the Yelp totally bizarre, because I, when I think back to my, um, you know, relationship with Indianapolis, that was mm-hmm. kind of a key moment where I said, this city rocks. And of course, you guys were involved, and I was, um, I, I'm really good friends with someone who used to intern at Yelp named Lauren, and uh, she brought me there and showed me around, and it was just like, we were able to, not we, you were able to fill an entire, you know, downtown library with local mm-hmm. businesses who were doing really cool things. So yeah, talk about that. Yeah, so it's been going on for a few years. It's been seven? Seven. Seven years. And this year is in Central Library and it has been for the past couple years. Um, And we love partnering with the library. It's a great way to get a bunch of people in the doors I've never been. So like it makes our hearts warm when Mm -hmm. people say like, I've never been to the library, but like like, tear up. fun party. You're like, go back to the library. (laughs) Um, But it's really exciting. So we have businesses apply in June. So if you know any great local businesses, definitely get them to apply. (laughs) Um, And then... Essentially, there's about 150 local businesses that all stack up on all seven floors of Central Library. And so they're really in every nook and cranny. The main floor, there's a dis- like a distillery room with like, like West Fork Whiskey and Eighth Day and Hotel Tango. And they're all in that room. You can go try samples and then buy like... The, they have like cool stocking stuff for bottles and things like that. It's a dangerous room. It's a dangerous. <laughs> it's what gets you to so, shop. Some people never <laughs> get out of that room. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, year one was we went into that room and then spent a ton of money. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, then there's like a beer wine room and then there's a bunch of food. There's entertainment on every floor, like different live music. This year we had like salsa dancers and we had a nutcracker that just started dancing to like the DJ's hip hop music. And, you know, you never know what you're, you're going to see. So, yeah. Um. It's definitely a shopping party is how I like to describe it. Because I think some people are like, oh, I'm like, I myself am not a big shopper, but it is like a party atmosphere. You could go and just buy food and drink and have fun, even if you're not doing your shopping. And yeah, um, yeah, it's been fun to see it evolve over the years. It was actually in City Market originally up in the upstairs. And we quickly were told that year that it was not to fire code because it was so packed. (laughs) So yeah, and it's it's still free for attendees, free for businesses to be there. So we'll get emails like starting in like May, like, are you guys doing bizarre? Like, we really need you to do the bizarre. We're like, okay, yes, we're doing it. So it's a top selling day for a lot of the businesses. Yeah, Yeah. we get some really cool responses. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that unique? Sorry. Is that a unique event to Indianapolis or is Mm -hmm. it? Really? I think they said it's one in DC has one. Biggest Yelp event in the country. Yes, it is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Indy. Never (laughs) underestimate us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that happens too often, right? Yeah, for sure. That's why we're doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Super proud of where we're from. Yeah. So I'll put some awkward questions out on the table. Yeah. Let's uh, maybe do it. They're, they're not awkward. Jared's not here, so I have to fill in in his spot. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, making people feel weird. Just kidding, buddy. I love you. Um, <laughs> no. So, how much involvement do you guys have in in some of those disputes that happen between like the consumer side uh, mm-hmm. of Yelp and the business side of Yelp? Yeah. Right. And if that's not a clear question, it's like when somebody <laughs> leaves a negative review yeah. you yeah. and then the business has to deal with it, like how much of involvement do you guys have in any of that? You can tell them where we were today. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually just drove up from Bloomington, but we led a panel for their chamber of commerce about reviews, the good, bad, and the ugly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Ooh, we, we have a deck for Yeah. This? We've <laughs> answered all the questions. <laughs> yes. um, so fun fact is that actually 60% of reviews on Yelp are three stars or more. So the majority is positive. And I think having like Yelp elite squads in every community has really helped because it's less like anonymous reviewers and more like people on the ground sharing stories. Um, so that's really been awesome. So we talk to businesses all the time. Like when they get a bad review, they email us and like we encourage you to email us because Honestly, our events get reviewed as well. So we understand both sides. Like when you <laughs> plan all year for Yelp Bazaar and then you're like, you get a review that's like, I, there's no food here. And you're like, we had a whole food hall, but like, yeah. and we marketed it, but, you know, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we, we understand both sides of like getting criticism and also helpful feedback for our events. So um, one thing that business owners can do. So say you get like a one star review on your page and Um, If it's super inaccurate and you can tell it's not even describing your business, you can go ahead and flag the review and it'll get sent to Yelp headquarters where there's real people that are like sifting through all those reviews and we'll get back to you within like 48 hours, I Mm -hmm. believe. 
Um, also, like, if it doesn't reflect an, an honest customer experience, so, like, say someone said, like, I loved the free cocktail I got tonight, um, but didn't like the ambiance, one star. You're like, that, that doesn't reflect a real customer experience. Like, you just admitted you didn't even pay for anything. So, like, you can flag that. That'll be taken down. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different examples of, like, where Yelp can help you. Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the things we talked about today, too, is focusing on not just responding to negative reviews, but also responding to positive reviews. Um, I think sometimes people, some bus- actually more and more businesses in India are doing a great job of spotlighting the great reviews that they're receiving as content for their website, for their social media, and doing like a picture of it because no one can speak better to your business than a second person who's spending their money there. So thanking those people and recognizing those moments that someone left chapati and they loved it so much that they went home and they wrote a five-star you know like a review because i think we get so focused on okay I'm, how am i going to respond to this negative review but also responding to the positive reviews is something that we yeah. try to encourage so that we don't get so focused on one review when your majority are positive and something we yeah. talked about today too is like you can reply publicly to someone's review so like Mm-hmm. Say it doesn't get taken down because you can't really, like, argue with it, but you still disagree. So you can just write, like, below it, like, thank you for your feedback. Like, actually, that's not what we served that day, but we're really excited to be serving this tomorrow, and it's handmade. And then, like, anyone in that a, reads In a nice, page, soft tone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like, well. anyone that reads that page will see, like, this business owner has it together. And, like, if they see that the business owner is responding to reviews, I feel like people that are going to review after that like are less likely to leave negative comments when you're like, hey, someone actually cares, is reading these. I'm going to have to face you know, whoever is like responding. Yeah. So. And there's a stat that people are more likely to upgrade their review once they've heard from, heard from them, like just knowing that they're heard. Yeah. Um, yeah. I that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I can think of two really good examples of businesses in town that really leverage their reviews, which is great. Um, sinking Ship. Oh, yeah. has put it on their napkins. Oh, Granted, yeah. it's yes. a bad review, yeah, but it's yeah. hilarious. It's uh, a good comical approach. I think, I think Martha Hoover does that as well. I think oh, yeah. she's, yes. And I don't know if that was a serious post or not, but I could have sworn I saw it on a t-shirt. Oh, yeah. 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 There's a couple oh. t-shirts, yeah. 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 Drives a Honda or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I think we, we shared that. That was funny. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. why not? Like <laughs> and, and just like even going on that, the photos, just like the user-generated gener- content. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you, you know, can use them does a really good job with that too here. I love that. That's... I think that that's so helpful whenever we go to a new city or something yeah. like that's what I'm getting more and more into doing itineraries and yeah. like trying to map out where we're going to be eating, like yeah. where we're going to be drinking, where we're going to be hanging out. It's so like having that stuff. And I don't pay a lot of attention to reviews. I just look at pictures. Like yeah. I know what yeah, I yeah, like. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> you should part. tell them about the bookmark also, collection. Yeah. So you can actually make like Yelp bookmark list. So like a Yelp bucket list. So like I have one for like, Denver and New York City and like when so great. people message us all the time like I'm in Indy for 10 hours what should I do and I just Boom. like you just share the link and it says all the places so like when you come back from vacation everyone's like wait where'd you go eight months later you're like here's the link oh, that's <laughs> it's awesome. really helpful yeah. it's really cool yeah and you can like pull it up on a map so you can like plan out your routes so that you're very strategic about <laughs> spending your time in certain Get it neighborhoods done. yeah I love that yeah it's handy yeah you <laughs> can get really detailed with with Google <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as well. I'm not going to lay out my plans uh, <laughs> on, on what I've been doing, but like, I like to start with obviously where we're staying, yes. mm-hmm. like where I can go get coffee within walking distance. Of course. And then we go to the furthest point that we're going to be traveling in the day and then okay. work ourselves back nice. okay. to where we're staying mm-hmm. and try to hit spots. Are there any kind of quirky things there. that you like to look for when you're traveling, like certain attractions or historic mm-hmm. sites? Like what's your... Um, Go to search. So mine right now is always going to be coffee, like yeah. coffee first, uh, like CrossFit gym, oh, okay, like yeah. as well, like that combination of at least one to two days. If I can make it two days in a row on vacation, <laughs> I'm on like, vacation. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm doing really well. But then it's brewery, yeah, and like who's got the hottest brewery? So I'll have like Yelp open, Google open, and mm-hmm. Instagram because I want to see what the things look like, yeah. <laughs> especially with beer. Not everybody always posts pictures of what it looks like. It's yeah. not always the sexiest visual. photo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're typically shitty. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but this is a new thing for me, right? Like yeah. I used to be more off the cuff and just kind of do things on the fly. But now I'm really enjoying like planning it out. It's half the fun, right? Oh, 100%. The anticipation of it. Yeah. yeah. I can just like sit around and make lists of places I want to go and map it out. Yeah. 
that's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I'm still on the fly. <laughs> I'm just like, I'll be in a neighborhood and I'll just get on Yelp and be like, hmm, I'll go next door. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm right here, right where I want to be. Because it just gives me anxiety if I make a list. Like, what if I don't make it there and that's all I'm thinking about when I leave? You yeah. just have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Part two. Yeah, I guess I'm young. I can do that. But then you end up settling for like... I never settle. Less than... I like never settle. quality <laughs> thing Mm-mm, you know what i mean that like that never happens <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm guaranteed so? absolutely i almost think that that's when you fall into things that you would have never expected to fall into so it's like i mean i'm just thinking of europe like my aunt was just really big on finding pubs and we found this pub i mean I, well i think i used yelp actually to find it <laughs> mm-hmm. but I, I didn't plan on going there and then we met these guys from london we were out until i mean it was my aunt my mom and then my uncle and we were out till like 3 a.m <laughs> taking shots with these guys from london <laughs> but we were in, I, I don't know if i got this confused but we were in amsterdam so it was just like <laughs> you know things like that happen and then you have this really cool story where if i like planned it out i probably would have been in bed by 10 30 <laughs> right so but that does happen for me sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta do both. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> like but maybe it's just being 22. <laughs> yeah. You, you kind of yeah. just want to, like, you know, keep um, going. Uh. So I've got some other business-related questions, right? <laughs> yep. uh, so do businesses have to, like, apply to be on Yelp? Or is any business that's essentially on Google automatically, like, inserted into Yelp? And then people can just start, ref- like, can someone say, I don't want to be on Yelp? You, c- I mean, it's a user generated platform. So someone's probably going to eventually add them just like any other website because it's just content from the community. Um, but all you have to do is uh, you can go to biz.yelp.com and you can add yourself on there. And thinking about it beyond restaurants and food, I think that's something that honestly people are always like, it's food and drink, food and drink. But actually retail is our largest category. So thinking of like Silver in the City, Homespun, places like that, um, dry cleaners, I found a place to get rid of my bed bugs that I got from Slovenia (laughs) like like on Yelp. But it's like all these different categories just for your everyday life, not just, you know, bars. Yeah. Yeah. There's also like like um, home maintenance has become big. So you can just like literally or literally Yelp like heating and cooling and then all these businesses come up and you can message them and ask for a quote. And it'll say like this business gets back to you in two minutes. So it's like just sending a text without going through the like, hi, like trying to call around and. So it's really instant. You can schedule like hair appointments, you know, mm-hmm. someone coming to your house, lots of different things. Now. Request can't a quote. <laughs> can't you group message? I'm sorry. Can't you group message? Like just send one text. to. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. yeah. One message. You can, like, like create one businesses. message and then like click, click, click. And yeah, it all goes out. My friend was getting a tattoo and we did that for tattoo <laughs> really? parlors. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's yeah. Smart. It was actually super useful. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. We got in like couple hours later. Did the tattoo work out? <laughs> yeah, it did. Good. Speedy turnaround <laughs> yeah. for tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe need more time to think. A little time to think <laughs> about it. <laughs> You'd think so. It's, yeah. it's like that commercial of that, uh, and I forget who the commercial's for, but it's this yep. tattoo artist, and the guy's like really nervous sitting in the chair, and the tattoo guy's like, yeah, I'm one of the tattoo artists in town. He's like, wait, what? Don't you mean like one <laughs> of the best? He's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, before we start talking about some of these drinks, I know we're oh, a little yeah. bit limited on time, so I want to make sure we get this all in. Um, I want to give our, our listeners uh, some some takeaways, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. how can people best use Yelp? Like, what are some some insider things that that they can go out there and do to get the most out of out of Yelp? Um, I would reinforce the bookmark collections that we were talking about. It's such a handy tool. I you know, aside from even working for Yelp, like it is an amazing tool. Like you just like pull it out. Okay. Tomorrow I'm in Louisville. Here are the places I've been keeping track of over the last few months. Like I'll be reading food and wine magazine and then I'll come across an article and I'll be like, Oh, book, bookmark that. I'll remember that. And then I had just have a little note, like try the blah, blah, blah there. And I just pull it up and I'm like, yeah, got it. I got to try it. Um, so I think that's one. It's a newer feature that a lot of people don't realize. Um, and then just getting out and the community to the events that Nikki's hosting. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not all just for elites. There are several events that are um, each month you can find that are open to the community and uh, get yourself out there and explore. Mm-hmm. What'd you say, Nikki? Yeah, I was going to say bookmark collections too. Like for example, I have a long list of indie businesses I still haven't been to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and so now every time I have meetings, I'm like, wait, wait, let me check. Yeah. All right, <laughs> we're going to meet here, new business. We're going to meet them. It's like <laughs> a game. Yeah. Well, yeah, try to like get out to them all. So that's big. Um, and yeah, coming to events is huge. Like I said, most people come alone and 
awesome friendships have been made and people just I bond met my over. husband. <laughs> yeah, Brett met her husband. So beat that. <laughs> my first Yelp event. Ooh, I like to careful. throw that in there. Yeah, yeah, the yeah the we're like, we're not one. a dating website, guys, but it worked <laughs> out. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. amazing. <laughs> what do you guys do with all the data? Like, oh, yeah. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff that you guys are looking through that yeah. gives you cool insights into like what people like, what people don't like. Yeah. Like, how much involvement do you have with any of that? Um, so Nikki and I actually are both on the national blog committee for Yelp. So we get to do a lot of fun data pulls with our data engineers of, um, for example, in January, um, one I did was the top cheese shops in America by a na national data poll, pulling it by um, cheese shop category and then the rating, rating. There's like a really strategic way. And it's not the thing I love about it is it's based on thousands and millions of reviews versus just like one person who's like that's my favorite cheese shop like <laughs> it like really makes it more based um and then like nikki did one on the top tiki uh, bars in america to stay warm during mm -hmm. the winter and those were all data polls um one fun stat that i loved from it's a few years but i'm sure it's still the same but customer service was like the number one they pulled the trending words in yelp reviews and just mm -hmm. reinforcing how much like you could make an amazing meal, but how do people feel when they leave your business? Um, that's just, I, I think, a, a good message to hit home too. Just that customer experience. Um, yeah, there's so many ways we're using the data, even just on house values um, in neighborhoods. When businesses are opening, we can track uh, the likelihood that a business is going to close based on their ratings. Like, there's so many what? fun stats out yeah, there crazy. that go beyond what we're doing on the community team. But are, are, we have people whose job is data mining. Like, that's their. So, do you guys bet? Yeah. Like <laughs> over unders on no. no, that'd be terrible. No, do you, <laughs> or do you like go into those businesses specifically to help them or anything like that? I mean, uh, sorry. Well, in the <laughs> past, we both just look at each other. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, in the past, I haven't seen like I haven't gotten much data about that like beforehand. Like there was a recent blog post that came out about like how Yelp is starting to do that more. Mm -hmm. um, so you can try to like support those neighborhoods mm -hmm. or like see mm -hmm. where growth is happening and what neighborhoods are about to like explode with businesses. Yeah. Um, so that's bi one big one. And then we've also seen things like sometimes we'll get fun emails. Or there'll be a fun blog post about like, um, like poke is on the rise. Like here, what here's cities yeah. are searching it the most. Like what like started in LA and it's gonna like sweep. To Louisville, Indy. Kentucky and really loves poke. Fun fact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's really fun. The different searches that you can do. Um, yeah, you can see trends. You can spot trends through it. Yeah. What's trending in Indy? Macaroons. <laughs> Macarons. <laughs> I feel like that's okay. old. You don't think so? Uh, no. no, I just I just went <laughs> to the mango lassie. No. Did you wait? Yeah. Did you go to the gallery pastry shop? They have dollar macaroons on Wednesdays. Yes. I drive from work yeah. there. So I went to the uh, uh, macaroon bar. Yeah. Macaroon bar. Yeah. Oh yeah, so good. Oh yeah, yeah. that is really that. good. Have you taken a class? They do no. classes there. That's what's really? up your alley. You seem into yeah. Actually, so does gallery pastry shop. They do great classes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's so many different data pieces. We just actually had like a economic outlook um, update for nationally just different cities based on the um, rates of businesses opening in those markets there's so many different yeah, ways you can use it an un unbiased opinion how does indy stack up to to <laughs> all the other markets that yeah. that you're in oh man i have a team nikki you asked <laughs> answer this. indy is the best one <laughs> <laughs> But honestly, like a lot of the data polls we've been doing, like Wildwood Market made it on like the top cheese shops in the U.S. Like a mm -hmm. lot of the data polls that we're doing feature local businesses. Um, and so like in Indy, so that's been really exciting. Like they just pulled the top 100 restaurants in the USA and the Ali Poke. Yeah, is that your point? Indiana Ali Poke. Avenue. They won. Yeah. One of the top 100 restaurants there. in yeah. the nation. Uh, Mama Whoa. Corolla has wow. just won. Um, Top 100 most romantic restaurants in the USA. So if you guys need Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. If you need some plans. Indy does have a really strong, vibrant Yelp yeah. community. It's we a stack beautiful up pretty thing. well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make so many friends through it. <laughs> Since you can't give me an unbiased answer. It's like picking a favorite child. Brittany. I mean, you know I have a long love here. <laughs> um, what, since you get to travel so, so yeah. often, what, what do we have that is unique that like you haven't seen anywhere else? That you're like, man, I love that Indy has this. And like, you're just happy that nobody yeah. else has had it yet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, like type of food. Type of food, type of business, like something okay. that you think is like really cool from, from where we're from. Maybe okay. a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
be a specific are we on person. Yeah. Are we, yeah. yeah, we should get on Yelp. Yeah, I sure. know this is like a SEO. classic. God, yeah. <laughs> I love I love this neighborhood that we're in and the diversity you can find here. It reminds me a little bit. Actually, just got back from Buffalo, New York, and they have very strong um, international business community. So this is like I was telling you when we started. Like this is the neighborhood that I hang out in a lot. So Saigon makes some of the best pho, and then you go across the street to Mama Ina's Mexican Bakery, and you can have yeah. some great rice pudding and see them make all the pastries. Mm. I love our airport too. I know this is like I a, love it too. I'm like we have a damn good airport, and every time I land there, I'm like best airport right here. Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. Britt's thrown an event in our airport as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they're great collaborators. We were talking about this earlier today. Yeah. They're community partners. That's what we were talking about. Like this airport is doing fun things with the community, and you think of it as a place for tourists, but it's also a place for locals. Um, so I just feel like they're constantly innovating and staying ahead of the curve. Um, also, I feel yeah. like Indy's like. Like change is happening so fast here. Like let's yeah. do something with the right white river and then suddenly there's this whole plan and there's gonna be yeah. kayaking and a beach and like yeah. vote on the bridge color. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. So many fun things. Um but I do make sure everybody who comes to Indianapolis tries the sugar cream pie, which I know is an old classic. But at Locally Grown Gardens, I love that I can get some reggae with my sugar cream pie. Where, wait, where is this? <laughs> oh so yes. Cool. Fifty fourth so and right? Monon. It's actually where I had my first Yelp event, free pie. Where she met her husband. <laughs> yes, so true. We, I used to wrap them in plastic wrap. Actually, Ron, the owner, gave me the biggest roll of pl- plastic wrap I've ever got. And I still have it from like seven years ago. So I'll wrap the pie and then ship it out to Iowa. But it is amazing <laughs> sugar cream pie. We had it at our wedding. We like it that much. So, oh, my gosh. I wish I would have known. I would have brought some for oh, you. Man. Hey, well, did we have it at the dinner party at your house? Um, the hi hi chi- what was that? Hugo, oh, a Hugo themed dinner party. Hugo-themed. Yeah, I don't think so. And we had a Maybe. sugar cream pie. And it was oh, the first one I had, had and one. I was trying to cut out sugar, and someone's like, "Here's sugar pie," <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, okay." I don't know. It's yeah. got a lot to beat. Oh, uh, so I'm from good. Zionsville, guys. My sugar uh, pie. Yeah. We love yep. her. We were just talking about. Yep. They just yeah. opened in Greenwood too. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I think this week. She's my yeah. She's my number two. I love Kelly. I know. I'm sorry, Kelly. You're no, you're right up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. My, I said on my pie chart. Yeah. <laughs> Literal pie chart. Yeah, I, was gonna say. <laughs> I mean, you met your husband at local. Oh, grown, I so, know. Yeah. That's so good. That's yeah. awesome. Yep. Um. W- so yeah, explain a little bit more about what we are drinking. Uh, oh, we'll, yeah. we'll get into this section because I want everybody who's listening to come out here to Chapati and you Thank have you. to try this. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a dog, maybe. When I read the lassie, email. Yeah. yeah um, I guess we can go. It's a, a mango lassie, which is a yogurt based mango beverage that it's pureed. It's Indian. Um, it is very refreshing. I think that's one of the reasons the recipe came to be, actually, is just for hot weather uh, to bounce it off. Sometimes they'll add a little bit of cardamom sometimes a little bit of rose water and the business we were talking about earlier um, there's even a national brand now it's called uh, that Indian drink and they bottle it up so you might find it like in the airport or grocery so I, I do feel like it's becoming more and more popular um, it's so delicious it's like a dessert the, for your drink for your meal the and, fruit yeah. flavor is out of this world right? right and then you get like the creamy texture and what amazes me the most about it is that the consistency like it's a little warm in here not a bad thing yeah but it's a little warm in here and this thing like kept its consistency the entire time oh, yeah. i th- feel like any other drink would have like um like you would have gotten some separation or something or it would have thinned out but mm-hmm. this is baller it's yeah, so good, good all the way through yeah nikki got the the chai their chai here too is really delicious they like make it like real deal chai not like the sugar stuff you can see them back there with the pot and the spices really? it's legitimate chai yeah <laughs> how was it amazing <laughs> it's it was, gone it was legitimate <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, so and, and then they brought out some other things here on the table. Yeah. Um, so can you explain what this is? I haven't tried yeah. any of it. Yeah. So this is um, Papa Dom, which they actually corrected me. They sell. They say uh, that that's the American way of saying it. They said the, the way that people usually order is like Papa, Papa. I, I want to make sure I don't like totally ruin it. He's like it needs a little in there. <laughs> so that's um, with some of the mint chutney and spices and a sweet and sour sauce. And then also the chapati, the namesake of the business, which is also a roti. If you can peek back in their kitchen and see them make this it's so cool it like balloons up up on the stove and then it like chills back down and they just make everything here from scratch too so it's the good wow. stuff so and, and we'll put pictures up but this looks like yeah. a tortilla yeah um, like it kind of like a naan or tortilla or something a, thin, a thinner bread you can put the fillings in it um it's often served sorry i'm touching it all but you're so, you still gotta try it after this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah they they are one of the 
I'm, I'm trying to think. There are, there are lots of places you can find it around Indy, but it's really fun to go behind the scenes again. And once you see it made, you're like, this is the coolest little dish. <laughs> yeah. You can try this. <laughs> yeah. They're great. Well, I can't wait to, to try it. I'm going to have to try some yeah. for sure, but I don't want to be chewing uh, <laughs> while, while we're talking. <laughs> About the urge. Um, yeah, so we're going to hop into some rapid fire questions. Um, so for all of you that made it out to our community workout that was brought to you by Naptown Fitness, it was an awesome we turnout. Them. We had about 50, people out there, which, great. Was, which is great. Um, so cool to meet some of you listeners that, that actually made it out there. Um, so thank you. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do that again. I'm going to talk to Jared to see if we can <laughs> make that more of like a monthly thing, just like a uh, community sweat, That's which cool. might be cool. But uh, Rapid Fire is brought to you by the wonderful people over at Naptown Fitness. So if you're looking for something to do, you, you're really into health, uh, look them up, go to naptownfitness.com, uh, send them a message on Instagram, go, go do something. But they, they've been able to build one of the best communities mm -hmm. in, in this in this whole city, in my opinion. And uh, I've been there for like six years, so they're awesome. doing something right. Anyway. They're bringing you the rapid fire today. So, <laughs> Haley, you want to kick it off? Yeah. Um, one word to describe Indianapolis currently. Vibrant. Mm. Oh, this is hard because it's a phrase, but I'll just say oh, empowering. Okay. Mm. Man, I wish this wasn't rapid fire because I want to dive into that. But I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Later. Yeah, the after right. show. <laughs> It'll be a follow up email. Uh, favorite place to get coffee. Okay, Calvin. Cal oh. <laughs> <laughs> you go first. Foundry Provisions. Calvin yeah. Fletcher's. What do you get? The Calvin Pepper sometimes. And then uh, Jeff always has some experiment he's working on. So he knows I like that stuff. So whatever he's messing around with in the back. Yeah. I get smoothies and then paninis and then kombucha. It depends how long I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> All day. <laughs> Earn, earns are cute. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> Favorite country? Oh, oh my gosh. Um... Oh my gosh, let's see here. This is so hard. Uh, Switzerland. Oh, geez. Vietnam. <laughs> it's between the two. <laughs> Rapid fire. I'm losing this game. Okay. <laughs> Australia. <laughs> I've never been there. And I've never Add been that there. To your list. there. Yeah. I saw Switzerland, but yeah. I didn't step over the border. <laughs> uh, what's your secret spot? So here, he, th I'm going to explain it this way. Uh, an opportunity for you to blow up a place that, not literally, but like an opportunity <laughs> for you to blow up a place Thanks. that you think like not a lot of people know about, but you're just like, yeah, that's my, that's my jam. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay, mine's going to be Tina's Tea Room. It's in Carmel, but my husband's from England and everyone that works there is from England. So they have the accents and it's like, it's like his little safe haven. <laughs> so we'll go there and get tea and he bonds with the staff and it's just adorable all around. So a special place to us yeah oh man i know i said like i love locally grown gardens mm -hmm. but i do feel like a lot of people know about it so um now they do <laughs> I know, but, um i would also say saigon restaurant like i love when i walk in the door so i have a fish uh, fish allergy like shellfish which is kind of hard with vietnamese being your favorite food uh but i'll walk in the door and I'm like hey Brittany, and he i know i'm safe in there to eat <laughs> all the vietnamese food i want and That's he awesome. knows exactly what i like to order it's just like it's a cool environment yeah love it Okay, the moment you fell in love with Indy. Oh, my gosh. Um, I honestly think it was when I became an intern. Because before mm -hmm. that, I just, like, when you grow up in Indy, you're like, yeah, this is my city. All your friends are kind of, like, looking for adventure. And, and then I, like, Yelp really opened up the doors to me because I, I had no idea. Half the businesses we'd have events at, Britt would be like, meet me here. I'm like, where? <laughs> <laughs> Never been on that street. Where am I? So that really opened up the door a lot for me, yeah. and that really like jump fired my love for Indy. Oh, uh, Britt's tearing up. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I would probably say, maybe I was a intern at Indianapolis Monthly. Actually, as a sophomore, I went to Huntington University my first two years, and I was interning there, and I was doing like fact checking, just like grind work at Indianapolis <laughs> Monthly, and I was like, I just love this, like all the businesses and talking to them on the phone, and and then I decided to transfer to Butler, and I. I mean, nothing about, I love Butler, but I honestly moved here for Indy. Like I was like, great Butler. They can give me a scholarship that matches. So I'm not like blowing this. <laughs> but I was like, I'm here for internships and I want to like make this my city. So that was, yeah, I would say probably Indianapolis monthly and in my internships. Yeah. That's awesome. We'll, we'll end it with two more here. Uh, what are you currently obsessed with? <laughs> this is 
get ready to geek out with me. Uh, <laughs> I would say it is the PBS Great American Read list. I've been keeping WFYI and Indie Library in the fold as I work my way through the hundred books on the, <laughs> the Great American Read list. So that's been kind of my geek out lately and oops, reading before bed. Which one are you on? <laughs> I am reading 100 Years of Solitude and it's maybe like my... Like, I'm probably like in the 40s. I love that book. It's so good. Have you read Love in the Time of Cholera too? No. Same author. You I'm probably s- like it. I think this go is to the Columbia. There you yeah. go. Ah. <laughs> first time you've admitted that you read something. <laughs> no. When <laughs> we talked to applause? Indiana Humanities, I told you that Frankenstein was my other favorite book. Okay. Was it yeah. Kira? Yeah. Yeah, she's great. I interned there too. I love them. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I love them. They're great. My f- current favorite obsession is I, I went to this meeting at Central Library this week and in the middle of a meeting someone kind of shuffled in late and at the end of the meeting when they asked for questions he raised his hand and he said he's been going to the library every day for four years and he couldn't use a computer or write before he started going to the library and he was like everyone here taught me how and he like took this story out of an envelope and was like I'd love to share my story with you guys like they just printed it for me I want to share it and then she took it to go read and he's like I apologize for the profanities it's the character's (laughs) voice it's not just for profanity's sake but it was so cool he's like I don't know maybe in his 50s and it was just like I started tearing up in this meeting that I just ended up at and it was amazing so yeah so now I'm like going there all the time we love our books (laughs) in our libraries yeah yeah, yeah. that's really powerful yeah Yeah, it was super cool all right, last question. Who would you recommend to be on the Dream Culture podcast? Uh, yeah. Um, I would say Heather Tallman with Indiana Grown. She is a get shit done lady, and I love that spirit about her. She does the hustle of promoting um, all food, drink, agriculture type businesses throughout the state. Uh, and um, she's just one of those people who like partners with all types of groups. It's not a pretentious approach to food. We just really love working with her. And um, I would say Heather Tallman. Yeah. yeah. And I would say Beth from Simplicity Juice. I don't know if you've ever talked to her, but she is a firecracker. Yeah, like, she she might be yeah. the most recommended guest. Really? Yeah. Uh-huh. So we, we have some this work to do now. <laughs> you could go there and get pie from my sugar po- grain. Yeah. Or from right. locally grown gardens. Yeah. <laughs> it's right there. We had an event with her and she just like the audience is cracking up. She's an amazing oh, yeah. storyteller. Hmm. Get her on. And she's cool. expanding throughout the Midwest. Fun fact, she's mm. throwing parties with it. Yeah. She's Boom. Yeah. she's on fire. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen her in many places. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's awesome. Cool. Guys, thank you so much for Thanks for being for here. Us. Thank um, you. I want to give you both an opportunity to kind of shout out where people can follow you either individually or mm-hmm. through Yelp, uh, how people can get involved, where they can find out more information, all the good stuff. Yeah. So I'm, now I'm just under like my personal umbrella. Uh, <laughs> it's weird to do like personal social media. I'm still uh, Brit Smith Indie on Twitter and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And then we're Yelp Indie on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. And we do yeah. lots of like local business giveaways and fun stuff. Um, and then if you want to come to any events, you can just honestly Google Yelp Indie Elite Squad or Yelp Indie events and see the list. Um, and lastly, if you have any questions or you want help with your business or you want us to help promote you, you have something mm-hmm. new going on, again, it's all free. And you can email me at indie at yelp.com and I'll get back to you really quickly. And it can honestly be as simple as like, hey, don't know how to partner, but would love to. So yep. <laughs> I'm going to put that part on repeat and then I'm going <laughs> to yes. blast it out <laughs> yeah. on our Instagram that's because I right. think that's yes. a huge resource that people need to be taking mm-hmm. advantage of. So yeah, absolutely. We're hustling inbox zero, ladies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll reply. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hells yeah. Yeah. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. Um, so this is uh, it's technically Wednesday, guys, the day before Valentine's Day. Go out there and support oh, yeah. uh, some businesses on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Any any spot in particular we can just shout out real quick before we get out of here? Oh, yeah. I got to give it up for um, Nesso at... Mm. Uh, the Alexander Hotel. Um, maybe it's a few months older, a little a little fancier style than I usually do, but mm. homemade, made from scratch pasta, fabulous vermouth menu if you like vermouth. Um, and the service was fabulous. It has, yeah, cool vibe. I always go to Bangkok. Um, it's kitchen and bar. Yeah, jazz, jazz kitchen, kitchen and bar. Yeah. So good. It's yeah. so big. They're so nice. It's on get Delaware, it. right? Yeah. yeah. Get a pad okay. thai as big as your face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Boom. romantic. My leftover. <laughs> yeah. My love language. Last minute plans. <laughs> go to Nesso or go to Bangkok. The way to my heart is through my there stomach. You go. Uh, again, thank you guys both. Uh, thank you for inviting us here to Chapati. This was awesome. Uh, as we like to say, drink culture, know your city. We're out. We're out. <laughs>